Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Heidi McIndoo. I am a registered dietitian. Uh, and today we are talking about snacking. One of my favorite things to talk about because I love snacking. I love eating. Um, so hopefully I will uh, get you guys some great ideas for snacking and you'll understand the benefits of snacking and uh, so much more. Uh, so I do have the chat open. So if you have any questions as we're going along, please feel free to pop them right into the chat uh, at any time. I can, um, I'll can. i give a chance at the end for questions, but we don't need to wait to the end. If you have questions at any time, uh, I'm happy for you to, to pop them in the chat. Uh, the Q&A, I can't see, however, so it's the chat that you need to look for to, to put those questions into. All right, so let's get going on smart snacking. All right, our goals today are going to be uh, going over some of the, the side effects or the consequences of not eating regularly. Uh, I'm going to go over the benefits of snacking, talk about what healthy snacking is versus mindless munching. And then we're gonna talk about how to create some uh, snacks or what makes a healthy and delicious snack. All right, so when you miss out on eating, whether it is uh, missed meals, skipped meals, or just going too long between meals without eating, you know, say you have breakfast at seven and you have uh, lunch at one and dinner at eight, uh, that's a long period of time to be going uh, without food. So there can be problems with that. And one of those is that uh, going too long without eating can actually lead to overeating. Because think about it, what happens? So say you um, you haven't eaten in a long time and you, you sit down and you are just, uh, you know, you're starving, you're so hungry, uh, you end up eating much more quickly. Uh, you don't really actually enjoy or savor your meal as much because you're so focused on just inhaling the food um, that you end up eating much more than you would have had you been not full when you sat down to eat, but uh, the idea is instead of going from starving to stuffed and starving to stuffed, the idea is to go from, I'm getting a little hungry, I think it's time to eat until you are feeling not hungry anymore. So not necessarily stuffed or full, but not hungry. So the idea is to stop when you're not hungry. Um, when you aren't overly hungry when you sit down to eat, it's much easier to do that. It takes about a half an hour for your mind, uh, or I'm sorry, your stomach to let your mind know, hey, I've had enough to eat, I'm, I'm satisfied. But if you manage to cram in three helpings of dinner before <laughs> that half an hour hits, then you will have overeaten uh, and chances are not be too comfortable uh, after dinner either. So that's one of the problems with going too long without eating. And, and what's too long? I, like I said, the recommendation I like to give is don't go um, more than say four hours or so without eating. Uh, however, you really need to listen to your body. And like I said, when you start to feel that hunger, that's when you start to think about eating, make sure you're getting yourself some food. And when you're no longer hungry, that's when you stop eating. Uh, so I see a question about intermittent fasting. Uh, so my big thing with intermittent fasting, and I know lots of people have had success with it, and I think that's awesome. Um, but I really, like I said, I really try and focus more on when it comes to eating, it's all about listening to your body and what your body needs versus um, following a very rigid uh, guideline that somebody else um, laid out. So like I said, <clears throat> so the intermittent fasting people say, okay, you know, eat for eight hours and don't eat for 16. Well, what if your body gets hungry in those 16 hours when your body is hungry, that's telling you it needs something. So by ignoring that, I feel like that's not the healthiest choice to make. Uh, and I know a lot of people say, oh, you get used to it. You get used to it. Getting used to it doesn't mean it's healthy or it's it's helpful for your body. So uh, I really try and get people to focus on um, being mindful of what their body wants and needs and listening to that without overdoing it and going to extremes. Uh, also, another, again, side effect consequence of skipping meals 
uh, missing meals, going long without eating, is missing out on nutrients. So your body needs a lot of nutrients over the course of one day. Uh, and also, you know, sort of, you can look at this in two, two ways. So uh, there are recommendations for how many servings from different food groups that we need. And then there are nutrient recommendations. The food group recommendations are based on our nutrient recommendations. So for example, the, our, what our body needs is around 1200 milligrams of calcium a day. You are very welcome. Um, your body needs around 1,200 milligrams of calcium. The average calcium-rich food, milk, yogurt, things like that, is around three to 400 milligrams. So the recommendation for dairy-rich foods is three servings a day. Uh, so that applies to all the different food groups. The reason I'm saying this is, um, say you, um, say you eat two meals a day instead of <clears throat> you know, three meals and, and getting some snacks in there when, when you need them. Uh, all right. So in those two meals a day, you need to get 1200 milligrams of calcium. So that's 600 per meal. So we're talking uh, maybe a container and a half of yogurt or a glass and a half of milk at each meal. That's one nutrient. The recommendations for fruits and vegetables are five to nine servings over the course of the day. So even if you're trying to aim in the middle there and get seven, we need three and a half servings of fruits and vegetables at each of those two meals. So that's just two food groups. You need a cup and a half of yogurt and three and a half servings of fruits and vegetables. We can go through the same with, you know, the protein group, the healthy fast group, the grains group. That's a lot of food that you have to eat at one time. Um, and it's, it's really not that practical, uh, not that comfortable to sort of, again, because the idea is to listen to your body, not force yourself oh, I need to get these nutrients in. Let me, you know, shove all this food in. So the more eating occasions you have, um, the more likely you are to get those nutrients you need while following a mindful sort of comfortable eating pattern. Uh, <clears throat> skipping meals and missing out on, on snacks and meals also can um, cause energy slumps. So that little graph there, uh, let's pretend that's energy. So we start the day and uh, we have our breakfast and we're great. We're feeling good. We're energized. And then we go a few hours and boom, I got nothing. I'm dragging. So what do most people do? Run to the vending machine, grab a candy bar. Boom, my energy spikes right up. But maybe the candy bar wasn't the greatest thing in the world and my energy drops again. So when you're not eating consistently, we have these jagged up, down, up, down, up, downs, um, which again, doesn't make us feel good. Uh, we are not working at our potential. We, uh, it can affect mood, energy, concentration, uh, learning abilities, if you're learning new tasks, things like that. And also uh, skipping meals, not eating can lead to headaches. And again, when you have a headache, uh, your energy might drop. Uh, you're not really as productive. You don't feel good. So who wants, who wants that? All right, so snacking. So again, Snacking, not everyone needs to snack. Remember, we want to be listening to our body. We want to be getting the nutrients that we need. Um, but I feel like a lot of people don't snack because of the misconceptions surrounding snacking. So when people think snacking, and I used to counsel people in a medical clinic, and uh, usually whenever I would present the idea of snacking, oh no, you know, that's just for kids or, well, no, I'm trying to, I don't want to gain weight, so I'm not going to snack or no, I, you know, snacking was very, if I asked if they said, oh no, no, I never snack. Like they were being, they were doing, uh, making a healthy choice by not snacking and they wanted to make sure I knew that. Uh, in reality, snacking, again, especially if your meals are far apart, can help you maintain those energy levels at more of a, a smooth, even level instead of that jagged up and down. It can actually help with weight maintenance. And that's because we're not going to be sitting down at mealtime overly hungry and stuffing ourselves. It can lead to increased nutrient intake. Remember, the more frequently we eat, the more likely we are to get uh, meet all of our nutrient needs. And I'm not saying we have to eat, you know, six, five course meals a day. A snack can be, uh, can be various sizes. So it's not... Um, it's not like you have to eat tons of food, you know, all throughout the day. 
It's again, listening to your body and getting that balance. So I said, those are some of the, the misconceptions and the reality again uh, for snacking. Uh, however, we have to understand the difference. I think a lot of people, when they perceive snacking, when I ask about snacking, it's that mindless munching that we're really thinking of. So we're thinking about that sitting in front of Dancing with the Stars, scooping the spoon right into the Ben and Jerry's or the bag of Oreos. Um, so that's not healthy snacking. So when we're thinking about that mindless munching, this is it's the, the nutrient lacking foods, tends to be more chips, cookies, ice cream. Uh, and again, not that there's anything wrong with including those in your day. I have a sweet tooth myself, but we don't want those to be what we're going to as our healthy nutrient rich snacks. Those are occasional treats. Uh, mindless munching tends to be done more unconsciously. We're not really, um, you know, oh yeah, I feel like having something to eat. I'm sitting on the couch. Let me just go grab something. We're not really giving it a lot of thought. And we may not even be enjoying it that much while we're eating it because we're not, we're paying attention to something else. We're zoning out playing video games or scrolling on Facebook or watching a, a movie or watching um, a TV show. So alternatively, when we think of healthy snacking, healthy snacking is consciously choosing foods that yes, we enjoy. That's number one. We want them to be foods that we like, uh, but that also meet our nutrient needs. So for example, uh, instead of a snack of a candy bar or you know an ice cream sandwich, again, nothing wrong with those foods occasionally, but when we're planning our snacks, maybe we have an apple with peanut butter slices on it or not peanut butter slices. I knew that sounded funny. An apple slices with peanut butter on it. There we go. Um, or maybe a snack is going to be uh, some whole grain crackers and cheese. Uh, or maybe, you know, dark chocolate is very healthy for us. So what if we had just a couple squares of dark chocolate, um, maybe paired with some fruit? So snacks, uh, we want to be looking at snacks that provide nutrients. And like I said, that tastes good. And we want to savor and enjoy these foods. We want to taste them. We want to remember tasting them. Again, you could, uh, you know, a lot of us could easily just whip through a pint of Ben and Jerry's uh, and really not even remember what flavor it was because we weren't paying attention. But if you're doing that uh, strawberries and dark chocolate, you know, break off, you know, don't shove the whole strawberry in your mouth. Take a couple bites. Same with the pieces of chocolate take bites, let it melt in your mouth, let it, let yourself really enjoy and taste that food versus just, you know, hand in your mouth, hand in your mouth, hand in your mouth. And it goes that way with everything. The other thing about healthy snacking is uh, really important to control amounts. So even if you are choosing a healthy snack, I, I've been joking about eating out of the pint of Ben and Jerry's and the bag of Oreos. Uh, even if you're choosing a healthy snack, maybe you're getting popcorn um, you know, you don't need to eat out of the whole bag because it's really difficult and you shouldn't eat out of the whole bag. Uh, it's much more difficult to control yourself and keep within uh, a healthy portion. Just because uh, something is healthy doesn't mean you can't overdo it. So yeah, I love skinny pop popcorn. I just think it's awesome. But if I ate an entire bag every day, I don't think the number on the scale would be doing what I want it to do. Uh, or, you know, I, I would maybe be filling up so much that come mealtime now, I'm not uh, ready to eat a meal. And now I miss my meal and then it's time to go to bed and now I'm starving because I missed my meal. So again, there's all these, you know, it's like a cycle. So you want to make sure whatever snack you are snacking on, you serve it out. So, you know, if this, the for popcorn, I know the serving is three cups. So get a nice bowl put three cups in there and now you can enjoy it, savor it. You can eat all of it and not have to feel guilty or worry about anything. Um, let's see, grating dark chocolate over berries. That's a great idea. Yeah, and whenever you make something smaller and it sort of sprinkles over everything, it definitely seems to last longer because uh, that chocolate gets on every bit, little bit of that berry. That's a fantastic idea. 
All right. So what makes up a healthy snack? I should have said healthy, but what makes up a snack? Uh, so two things we want, um, and, and I really do like to pair one of each of these, uh, something from the, this list together. Uh, and that's because they serve different purposes. So high quality carbs. So think popcorn, whole grain crackers, whole grain bread, whole grain cereal, um, nuts, to an extent fruits, things like that. Those um, provide fiber. Uh, fiber is filling. Fiber keeps us feeling fuller longer and it helps make whatever we are eating stay with us longer. So again, keep that candy bar or if you're running to Dunkin' Donuts and grabbing a donut or a muffin, you know, you're hungry within like an hour of eating those things. And that's because they are that bottom there, they are more processed uh, foods, which again, okay to include, let's not try and make them a consistent snack. Um, what happens with these foods, they're digested very quickly. We get that quick energy spike because our blood sugar goes up, but now we're hungry again soon after. They're just, they're digested and absorbed by our body very quickly. Whereas fiber and protein take much longer for our body to break down and digest so they stay with us much longer, keeping us feeling fuller longer, satisfied longer, and will help get us to that next meal uh, at a comfortable point versus being starving or needing to, to grab something we weren't prepared for. Uh, proteins, so proteins, the meat product, you know, eggs, nuts, um, and you notice I, I said nuts were a high quality carb, they're both, they're two first, so that's really great. Um, so protein, we have milks, yogurts, cheeses, um, beans, eggs, nuts, nut butter, seeds, all of those are great protein foods. Just like the fiber, the protein helps take longer to digest, keeps us feeling fuller longer. So both of those are keeping us feeling full and satisfied. Uh, protein. Uh, in addition, also helps maintain our muscle mass. The more muscle we have in our bodies, the more calories our body can burn without gaining weight. So we want to be as much muscle as we can so we can eat more food. Um, ideally, I mean, obviously there's a, there's a limit to that, but as we get older, our muscle mass tends to deteriorate, which is one of many reasons why as we get older, we tend to start gaining weight. We're eating the same food that we did you know, 10 years ago. However, there's less of us that's muscle. So our body actually needs less calories. So we want to um, make sure that we uh, get enough protein to help keep our muscles as much, you know, as, uh, as much muscle as we can. Obviously activity plays a part in that. Carbs, on the other hand, give us energy. Yes, we need carbs, we need energy. Carbs are our body's preferred source of energy. So we wanna make sure we get them. It's just about choosing the healthiest ones the majority of the time. So when you're choosing a snack that is both protein and high quality carbs, you are choosing a snack that is going to give you energy, keep you satisfied and keep you feeling fuller uh, for several hours versus you know a half hour or an hour. So those processed foods, the candies, the sodas, the um, the chips, the ice cream, the pastries, things like that. Again, fun treats once in a while, but uh, we do want to limit those. Uh, and just again, to reiterate, when we've got those simple carbs, the refined things, we have that uh, quick spike in blood sugar, which we can also translate into energy. So boom, we're feeling great. Oh no, we're not feeling so great anymore. However, when we're choosing the protein and the fiber rich foods, um, see the change, how our blood sugar and our energy level, it uh, it doesn't give us that quick high, that quick spike. And and I, I these aren't really great graphs because it looks like they're sort of the same time period. I had a hard time finding what I wanted to do. And then I, in hindsight now, I should have put times on there. Um, the green chart, actually that bottom one is a much longer period of time till we get that, you know, the end of that small sort of hill of a peak versus the red um, spike of a peak. So where this red spike
spike on the red chart, the, the one on the left, um, where it spikes and then drops, that's going to be roughly at that drop point an hour, maybe an hour and a half. On the other chart under the protein and fiber, that end point where that sort of gradual hill gently drops and it even it doesn't even get as low I feel like as the red one um that's more like the let's say three three and a half hour range so those foods are going to stay with us uh much longer all right so now what foods do we choose so we know we want proteins we know we want some good quality carbs what foods are we choosing um so in the protein group lots and lots of options that mix and match. So just, I mean, you can see the list, but looking at this list, I mean, chia, have anybody ever done chia pudding? It's really interesting. Um, and I, I don't mean interesting in like a weird way. Uh, it's very good. I I was concerned, I'm, I'm big on texture. I'm not big on like cottage cheese and lumpy things, but uh, chia pudding, I don't get that texture feeling from. And it's, uh, it's really good. You basically, you can... Just put some chia seeds in your favorite yogurt. Uh, there's so much fiber in chia that it quickly sucks up all the moisture and makes it a really nice, uh, thicker product. So some chia pudding, put some sliced fruit on there and you've got your protein, you've got your carbs uh, and you actually have some healthy fats as well with the chia. Smoothies, if you have time, if you're, you know, in a location where you can make a smoothie. My favorite smoothie is a half a cup of non-fat plain uh, Greek yogurt, uh, one frozen banana, a little splash of milk. Again, you can choose whatever milk you, you use. You can also leave out the milk and make a smoothie bowl. Uh, and then I just throw in handfuls of whatever frozen fruit I want to. So I've got my dairy, my yogurt with my protein, and I've got a ton of those high quality carbs from the banana and the frozen fruit. Uh, having milk with a peanut butter sandwich, having, uh, oh, and a favorite dip of mine is uh, non-fat Greek yogurt with peanut butter stirred in. Um, I actually, you know what? I will tell you, I do prefer to use vanilla yogurt with this one. Um, a little, like a tablespoon of peanut butter mixed in with some vanilla yogurt. Uh, it makes for a great fruit dip or carrot dip, veggie dip. Um, and so that's fun. You can put cottage cheese into smoothies and boost the protein there. Uh, hummus is great, uh, not only just with whole grain crackers, it's great with vegetables. Um, it can also be, you know, spread on a cracker and maybe uh, make little, your own little, what are those called? Lunchables, make homemade Lunchables with crackers and some, some meat and some hummus as the spread. Uh, spread hummus on a half a gr uh, slice of whole grain bread, put some uh, low fat turkey in there, make a little half a sandwich. Uh, so, so many, so many different options uh, for getting some protein in. Um, let's see, nuts, nut butters are great, hard boiled eggs. Um, look at roasted chickpeas that you can make your own very easily, um, or you can buy them. You can also eat edamame plain, or I've also seen the roasted edamame, very similar to the, the whole chickpea idea. Uh, so that's always uh, a nice option too. So, and again, just keep in mind uh, portion sizes. Just because roasted chickpeas are good doesn't mean you eat the entire bag of them. Um, if you do go to an office for work, I love, we have some, um, they're called lock and lots of like Tupperware, uh, containers that hold just an ounce of nuts. So every night when my husband comes home from work, he fills up that container with nuts and he knows he has an ounce of nuts uh, as one of his snacks at work. So getting containers that you can easily um, package snacks in and bring them to work or wherever you're going can be helpful as well. And those carbs. So what do we want from carbs or what can we get from these carbs? Whole grain crackers, Popcorn, like I said, I love that skinny pop, but homemade popcorn is great as well. Fruits, vegetables, whether they are fresh, frozen, dried, or pureed, think applesauce, uh, they are all equally nutrient dense. Uh, we do want to be careful with the dried fruit only because it is, uh, it's a little more nutrient dense, which means it's just a higher concentrated um cal calories and sugar. And that's not anything, I mean, one raisin is going to be equal to one grape, but if you're having a half a cup of raisins, 
uh, versus a half a cup of grapes, you're going to fit a lot more raisins in because that uh, they have condensed so much in size. So you want to just watch the size, the portions when it comes to the dried fruits. Uh, whole grain breads, again, toast those up, make sandwiches out of them, whole grain pretzels, nuts, nut butters, um, freeze dried fruits and veggies. Those are, you know, you can get those in all. I've seen tomatoes and carrots and green beans and pineapple and mango and berries. So those are all fun options as well. Um, and, and mixing and matching. Again, if you're having veggies, pair it with the protein, with the hummus. If you're having fruit, it goes great with yogurt or peanut butter. Um, popcorn, make your own little trail mix. Get some popcorn, some nuts, and some raisins all in there together. Maybe throw a little handful of M&Ms for some fun. Um, crackers, great with the hummus, great with uh, cheese, great with nut butters. So we're, we're always trying to mix and match and pair things together. When you are on the go, um, be prepared. Uh, so that means, and actually this is, in the, this is more than just on the go. This is just in general. If you want to start healthy snacking, you need to get healthy snacks in your house. So make sure you put them on your grocery list each week, whatever it is that you decide you want. Um, if you have foods that need any prep, wash and trim them. Ideally, when you get home from the store, because once you put them in that drawer, the bottom drawer of the fridge, a lot of people aren't seeing those again until it's time to throw them out. So if you're if you decide you're going to snack on carrot sticks and celery sticks, wash them, peel them, cut them up, put them in a jar of water in the fridge, um, and they are ready to to grab and go for anybody. Uh, having a small cooler is great. Uh, reusable storage containers, uh, like I said, we have ones that you know we know it holds an, exactly an ounce of nuts, so that's really handy. Um, if you and this is great for adults or kids. If you have busy weeks, then maybe on the weekends, uh, pack up your snacks. So pack an ounce of nuts, you know, five different ounce containers of nuts. Pack up, um, you know, bags of carrots, or you know, if you're going to be having say mozzarella sticks or cheese sticks with with crackers, get things packaged up so they're just ready to grab and go uh, when the time comes. Uh, the more prepared you are, as in anything. Uh, the more successful you will be. Uh, and we can't forget to hydrate. We want to hydrate throughout the day. So uh, water has always been the best choice for hydration. It is, uh, It will completely hydrate you, but it has no calories, no sugar, no salt, no unhealthy fats or anything um, unhealthy. A lot of people aren't loving water, um, but flavored seltzers are great, flavored waters. Um, you can add fruit to your own water and keep it like in a pitcher in the fridge. Low-fat milk is great. Water-filled fruits and veggies are great sources of hydration. So snacking on watermelon or cucumbers. Um, even they have little, you know, tiny, tiny single servings. My daughter gets these uh, almost like drinkable soups that she really likes. Um, and then always having uh, refillable water bottles so we can uh, help the environment as well. Just fill that every night when you get home from work, wash it out, fill it, put it in the fridge so it's ready to go. Uh, in the morning when you are. Um, whoops, whoops, back, back. I'm not ready for that yet. There we go. Uh, so remember, just to a reminder, uh, we want to be eating every, say, three to four hours, but listen to your body. Uh, we want to be choosing quality carbs and proteins. Uh, do some planning. Make sure the food is in your house, easily accessible. You have a way to bring it if you're going somewhere uh, and make sure that you hydrate. Um, so now we have time for questions. If anybody has any more questions and I'm also a great snack. I love these little energy bites. Um, this is probably my favorite recipe, but the thing about veg, you know, energy bites, you can totally mix and match. Don't do peanut butter. These can be made with any nut butter or sunflower seed butter, soy, um, soybean butter, soy nut butter. Uh, if you, don't like flax, put chia in there. If you don't like coconut, leave it out. Um, you can use um, raisins instead of the chocolate chips or dried cranberries instead of the chocolate chips. You can use different flavored extracts. So say you're gonna do, um, let me try and think of one. I think one that would be good would be like a, let me think, like a raspberry extract. It could, I would probably do a more milder nut butter in that case. 
um, but the raspberry with the chocolate, and you could even put like those freeze dried raspberries in it, uh, or just the dark chocolate chips would be good. Um, so you can really, uh, you know, mix and match lots of things. Um, I have everything, but the, you know what? You, you can leave the wheat germ out. It's literally, it's a tablespoon. Um, it's providing you uh, a little bit of fiber and some healthy fats, but you're also getting that from uh, the flax um, and the peanut butter. So if you don't have wheat germ, that's one of those ones. It's it's not gonna impact the recipe recipe negatively if you leave that one out. Oh, and I will say the way I store these when I make energy bites, I freeze them on a parchment lined cookie sheet. Once they're frozen, I put them in a Tupperware container or a you know freezeable container. And that way I they last a lot longer. They don't stick all together. They might stick a little bit after time, but you can break one off. You just pull out one or two or whatever you need uh, when you need them. And then uh, they last longer. Mm. You are very, you are very welcome. So yeah, so that's it. Feel free to, I thank you all for joining me. Um, I hope you have a great afternoon. Like I said, I will, uh, I will hang out here for a minute. Um, are certain snacks better before bed? Um, so before bed, you really want to be focusing on the not super heavy, not super spicy, um, looking for snacks, uh, more simple um, milk, like bowl of cereal, maybe banana, um, nuts, things like that. Smaller snacks that aren't going to uh, cause your body to keep you up because it has to spend so much energy digesting something. Um, that old like, you know, glass of warm milk is helpful for sleeping as well. Um, so yes. Yeah. So again, smaller, more, what is the word? Just I don't want to say boring or neutral, but just bland, but just not, not overly large, not overly spiced, things like that. Um, how about before exercising? Yeah, car, uh, what you want to do primarily before exercising depends on the kind of exercising, but if you're just, you know, walk around the block, you know, that kind of like not marathon running, like just your daily kind of workout, um, getting some carbs is a great idea. So look at those um, quality carbs. And then after exercising, you want carbs and protein to replace what you've um, burned off as well as fluids. And, and actually ideally fluids, you should be getting while you're being active as well. Uh, should there be a time to stop eating before bed? Uh, you know, not specifically, again, if, if, if you're going to bed in a half an hour and something happened over the course of the day and you didn't eat enough and now you're hungry, then I'd say, go ahead and eat. Um, make it something small and nutrient dense, but there's no hard and fast rule. Like if you're going to bed at 10, stop eating at eight. Uh, it's more, um, you know, ideally getting all your nutrient needs met, uh, over the course of the day. So I guess I, I would say you do want to eat more over the course of the day so that in the evening, uh, you don't have to eat a lot closer to bedtime. Um, but like I said, there's no real hard and fast, you know, specific rule because it's all about total calories in versus total calories out. So, I mean, if, if, you know, say your body, and I'm totally making this number up, say your body needs 15 or say your body needs 2000 calories. Uh, if it's eight o'clock and you've only eaten 1500, then having a snack isn't going to do you, you know, any harm. Um, if it is six o'clock and you've already eaten 2,500 calories, uh, then maybe, you know, we want to be just having something very small for dinner and, and maybe nothing before bed, if that makes sense. <clears throat> great, great. Thank you so much. Glad you liked it. You are very welcome.